Today, I briefly go over the mechanical and design evolutions of the Cadillac Escalade over its first five generations. The original Escalade was rebadged GMC Yukon. It was powered by a 5.7-liter L31 engine, which was a variant of the original LT1 found in the 1970s Corvette and Camaro. This old cast-iron engine was thirsty and not powerful. It was mated to a 4L60E 4-speed automatic transmission, which is very robust. The original Escalade was also equipped with an Autotrack selectable 4-wheel drive. To some, the second-gen Escalade is where the story really began. This time, the Escalade added exclusive luxury touches above the GMC Yukon. The extended wheelbase ESV and the pickup variant EXT also became available. In my opinion, this is the best sized generation, measuring just over 5 meters at under 100, 199 inches in length and just over 2 meters at 78.9 uh, inches in width. The truck's angular body shape and clean design were an instant success, quickly establishing the Escalade as the truck to be seen in. Rear-wheel drive was standard, while the ESV and EXT only had full-time all-wheel drive. GM chose not to make it a four-wheel drive vehicle like the Yukon and the Tahoe. The base engine was the LM7 5. 3 liter V8, which was part of the third gen small block family. It has a cast iron block with aluminum heads. The LQ9 6 liter V8 was available as a high output unit. Rear wheel driver models continue to use the 4L60E transmission, while all wheel drive upgraded to the uh, 4L65E, which is stronger. Today, Many love the LQ9 equipped Gen 2 Escalade thanks to its exceptionally robust powertrain and clean, now classic styling. The third gen Escalade took another step in the luxury direction and fully established the mark as the vehicle for the day's who's who. It once again wears a sharp, clean exterior design with a lot of presence and just the right amount of vulgar. This generation grew slightly in size to 5.14 meters or 202.5 inches in length and uh, just over 2 meters or 79 inches in width, which is barely manageable outside North America. The gas model started with the L92 6.2 liter V8, which is a variant of the all aluminum LS3. It was one of the first push rod engines with variable valve timing, though with only two settings. The L92 in the Cadillac did not come with active fuel management hardware. This made the 2007 and 2008 Escalade a very good option on the used market. In 2009, GM added a large, larger fuel pump and a set of larger injectors and made a flex fuel variant of this engine coded L9H. This is exactly the same engine except for the intake manifold and fueling accessories. Many consider it the best of the third gen Escalade. From 2010, GM added active fuel management to the L92 and got the L94. The system is more durable than German cylinder deactivation technologies. Still, the hydraulic lifters wear out over time and the uh, deactivated cylinders wear faster, eventually resulting in an out-of-balance engine that will need rebuild. All gasoline V8s were mated to the uh, 6L80 6-speed automatic transmission. Rear-wheel drive was standard and ESV and EXT variants had all-wheel drive as standard. It is again a full-time all-wheel drive system with a planetary center differential. Unique for this generation, GM introduced a hybrid variant. It was powered originally by the LFA 6-liter engine, which was replaced by the LZ1 with minor revisions. These were mated to a unique two-mode hybrid system, which uh, is an eCVT with three planetary gear sets. 
It is very similar to the multi-stage hybrid eCVT in the Lexus LC500H and LS500H. The hybrid started as rear-wheel drive only but gained a four-wheel drive variant in 2011. Keep in mind that this is four-wheel drive, not all-wheel drive. Hybridization greatly improves fuel economy, resulting in 22 mpg and 21 mpg for the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, respectively. That is just 10.7 liters per 100 kilometers for the two-wheel drive and 11.2 for the four-wheel drive, saving about a third of the, of the, of the fuel, especially for CT driving. Unfortunately, the system can fail and the battery will die very likely taking with the owners saving fuel in the form of repair bills. In my opinion, the 2008 and 2009 Escalades without active fuel management was the best on the used market today. The fourth gen Escalade is a simplified, more modern take on the third generation. Even though the truck may look vastly different at first glance, upon scrutiny one would realize how similar it is to its predecessor. Indeed, the two share the exa exact same wheelbase and total length. On the inside, however, Cadillac made a huge leap and completely modernized the vehicle's interior and technology integration. This generation started to use the 5th gen small block V8 in the form of a 6.2-liter L86. Compared to the L94 in the last generation, the L86 has direct injection but is otherwise similar. It is based on the LT1 engine modified for truck use. It also has active fuel management. GM started the production run with the same 6L80 6-speed automatic transmission in 2014 for the 2015 model year. It was replaced by the 8L90 8-speed automatic transmission a year later. This was based off the design of the ZF8 HP and is considered rather unreliable. For the 2018 model year, the 10L80 10-speed automatic transmission replaced the 8L90. This is usually considered as an improvement. Like the original Escalade, this generation again used four-wheel drive rather than all-wheel drive, though rear-wheel drive was standard. It appears that the earliest vehicles with uh, 6L80 are the most reliable used, while the later 10-speed ones are good too. Many, including me, consider the latest Escalade a step backwards in the exterior styling. The truck is too big and too blunt, and its hood is too high. Speaking of being large, the truck has grown significantly in size, measuring just under 5.4 meters or 212 inches in length and over 2.05 meters or 81 inches in width. It is hardly usable outside North America. The ESV is more like a minibus and uh, looks almost comical. On the inside, however, GM certainly did some things right. It has a luxurious, high-tech interior that rivals the German Marx and uh, the Lincoln Navigator. Its 36-speaker AKG sound system joins the speaker count war that is being waged across the full-sized SUVs today. This generation continues to use the 10L80 transmission with rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive both available. The base model uses a 6.2-liter L87 engine, which is a variant of the L86 with dynamic fuel management instead of the old active fuel management. Dynamic fuel management allows the engine to run in 17 different cylinder patterns instead of always deactivating the same four cylinders. It not only improves fuel economy, but in theory, should reduce wear on the cylinders and pistons. GM also added a 3-liter LM2 Duramax inline-six diesel engine. This is an all-aluminum engine with cast iron liners and cast aluminum pistons. It is being replaced by the LZ0 with steel pistons. With the same torque output and a lot less power compared to the L87, this diesel engine is simply too small for a truck this size. It is mostly intended to be exported to countries like China with high taxes on engine displacement. Last but certainly not least, there is the LT4-powered Escalade V. 
The LT4 can be considered the LT1 with features of the LS9. It uses the same 5th gen block with dry sample lubrication, improved heads, forged pistons and stainless steel exhaust manifolds. It uses a ridiculously large 2.7 liter E10 TVS roots type supercharger and delivers about the same power as an L87 and an LM2 put together. Seeing that this truck is quite ugly and overladen with technology, I think only the Escalade V will be loved by enthusiasts in the future.